Welcome to Movie Shortens. Follow us today to a 2020 South Korean comedy film titled Honest Candidate. Before we start, be aware, there are spoilers. Our movie is set in Korea and starts with a politician, Ju Sang Suk, reviewing her campaign ad in a room full of people. She talks about her grandmother's struggles and how she fought for her after she died. Ju is candidate number one for the elections. She has been elected three times and she's now running for her fourth term. We meet Ju's aide, Mr. Pak, who helps Ju to fit in and relate to the people she meets and greets as they walk around the city meeting potential voters. He's very helpful throughout the movie. He remembers people's problems and the promises that Ju made to help them. We also find out that Ju's running against candidates Nam and Shin. They have a debate with Ju on TV and Nam asks Ju about the Ak Hui Foundation which was set up to honor Ju's dead grandmother. Nam thinks the foundation and college are being used to launder money. Ju stalls for time when asked questions. She doesn't answer Nam's questions clearly and asks him about his troubles in the stock market. Later that night, Ju meets with Nam and Mr. Kim Sang Pio. They drink and party while Mr. Kim tells Nam to keep his nose out of the Ak Hui Foundation. Nam is upset because he was questioned about his money problems. So, to apologize, Ju tells Nam and Mr. Kim about a company that will earn them lots of money. It looks like they're all working together. Despite Nam being Ju's rival, they sing karaoke, drink, and party. As the party continues, we see a hidden camera watching them. Soon after, Mr. Park chases a reporter, Huang, who was given the camera footage, but Huang escapes in a red car. Mr. Park remembers the license plate number and tells Ju, who asks Mr. Kim to take care of the situation. Sometime later, Huang accidentally crashes into a car in his parking lot. It's no accident though. The driver of the other car works for Mr. Kim and offers a BMW as a bribe for the camera footage and the red car. Soon after, Mr. Kim arrives at a speech and tells Ju that he's exchanged the camera footage for a BMW. Ju, of course, had to pay for the BMW to keep her secret safe. That night, we meet Ju's husband, Bong, who pretends that he plays badminton and exercises so Ju can get more votes. We also meet Ju's grandmother, Kim Ak Hee, who's quite funny. She calls Ju in the middle of a stormy night and we see that Ju's grandmother is obviously not dead like Ju has said throughout her campaigns. Ju was just looking for sympathy votes by saying Kim died, a mistake and rumor Ju started after she misunderstood Kim when she said she wants to go back to nature. Kim is getting tired of hiding away and all the lies, so she gets angry and gives Ju the finger. Ju gets flustered, leaves and goes out into the storm. Outside in the storm, Ju prays for money and success. While inside, Kim prays for the lies to stop and for Ju to be honest. Lightning strikes the ground near Ju and she runs away. We guess that someone's wish has come true. And the next day, Ju knows something is wrong after she can't lie to her husband, Bong. In the next scene, we see another reporter, Mr. Jung, getting ready to interview Ju. Mr. Pak annoys Mr. Jung and asks him to stick to the script that's been prepared. As soon as the interview starts, we see that Ju can't lie and gives honest answers to any questions she's asked. She gives some funny answers as Bong and Mr. Pak try to stop her from saying too much. Later, in a car, Ju and Bong argue and Ju says that she can't lie for some reason. Things get tense as Ju tells Bang how she really feels about him being unemployed and then he runs away screaming. Soon after we see Ju in a bookstore. She nervously signs a copy of her autobiography as the press takes photos. At the press conference, Mr. Pak tries to stop Ju from talking, but she has a breakdown and admits she didn't write the book. Later, Mr. Park asks Ju if she was really going to buy him a new car like she promised, but is upset to hear Ju honestly answer a used car. Back at the apartments, a reporter, Kim Jun Yoong, takes Ju's mail. He hides when she turns up and Ju and Mr. Pak go upstairs while the reporter puts the mail back. Just after, Mr. Pak sees the mail is back and knows something is wrong. He chases after Kim Jun and sees his face when he checks his dash cam. Inside her apartment, Ju continues to argue with Bang and we see her mother-in-law has come to check on her. It turns out Ju really doesn't like Bong's mother, who she calls the hag-in-law. Bong's mother asks Ju to talk honestly, 
but soon leaves after Ju tells her how she really feels. Sometime later, Mr. Pak takes Ju to see a doctor, and there's a funny scene when Ju has acupuncture treatments while Mr. Pak tries to get her to tell simple lies. We're later introduced to Mr. Lee, a retired politician hired to help Ju in her campaign. He knows that Ju can't lie, so he starts networking, running a smear campaign against Nam, and tries to help Ju get more votes. Nam uses smear tactics to spread the word about Ju's son, Eun Ho, who ran away from military service. We meet Eun soon after and we see Bang chasing him and holding him down while a man cuts off Eun's long hair. In the next scene, Ju talks with now short-haired Eun, who doesn't want to do military service. After negotiating, Ju agrees to give Eun lots of money when he finishes his military training. After talking to Lee, we find out that Eun isn't really Ju's son, and Lee later double-crosses Ju and tells reporters the truth. You really can't trust politicians. The news about Eun is all over TV, and we find out that Eun knew Ju wasn't his birth mother. One night, a drunken Bang told Eun the truth about his birth mother, and after hearing this, Ju throws Bang in the pool. Sometime later, candidate Shin gets Ju to admit she was taking bribes from a company called Taiwan. Then we see Mr. Pak taking back all the gifts Ju was given from the company, including clothes, paintings, expensive watches, and even the house. It looks like Ju is gaining popularity, so she changes her slogan to the nation's most honest politician. She's decided to be honest, and her videos start trending online as she dances and sings her campaign song with her son. After lots of dancing and singing, Ju passes a woman holding a sign asking for help. Mr. Kim said not to look into why the woman is asking for help, and later we see Ju's grandmother at the hospital, where she's told she has one month to live. To hide the grandmother's true identity, she had to change her name and pretend to be Mr. Pak's grandmother. In the following scenes, the reporter Kim Jun finds out information on the Ak Hui Foundation. He then goes on TV and exposes the college Ju set up. She took money from poor families, then raised the admission prices and took more money from the elite families to set up scholarships. If the children from the poor families complained, they got an F and their scholarships were revoked. After the news is all over TV, Mr. Lee tells Ju to have a press conference and tell the truth about what she did. Mr. Kim is seen getting rid of any information that ties him to Ju and the Ak Hui Foundation. Ju's grandmother later prays that Ju can lie again, and Mr. Lee sees that Ju's grandmother is still alive. He switches over to help Nam's campaign, and later, Mr. Kim also says he'll support Nam. That night, Ju talks with Kim Jun and asks him to stop looking into the Ak Hui Foundation. When Kim Jun refuses, Ju jokingly gives him the finger. There's an emotional scene when Ju goes to see her dying grandmother in the hospital, who later takes her last breaths as Mr. Pak watches over her. We see later that somehow, Ju's grandmother's dying wish has come true. Ju can lie again. Bang doesn't look happy when Ju tells him the news and makes some plans. At the grandmother's funeral, Nam and Mr. Kim have teamed up and Ju tells him she'll drop out of the race. They believe her because they still think she can't lie, but we know the truth. In the next scene, we find out that Mr. Kim was using hidden cameras to spy on Ju and Nam. Mr. Pak recovers what he thinks are the original video files on a flash drive from Huang. Mr. Park swaps the flash drive for an expensive watch and escapes in Huang's new car, but it's not a BMW as promised. To keep Ju safe, Mr. Pak takes her to Mr. Kim's hidden spying room and gives her the flash drive. He says he'll take Huang's car as a present from Ju. He got his new car. That night, Ju goes to see Miss Choi, the woman she saw earlier asking for help. There's some very sad news as we hear that Mrs. Choi's son suffered from shock and was hospitalized after the college demanded he give back his scholarship. It turns out that Ju isn't completely rotten though. She apologizes to Mr. Choi and later pays for all of her son's hospital bills. Just then, Mr. Lee turns up and chases after Ju. It's time for a car chase as Ju tries to outrun Mr. Lee and Nam in Huang's car. The chase ends when Ju is cornered and surrounded by Nam, Mr. Lee, and a group of men. Luckily, Ju has backup and Mr. Park and Bong turn up to save her. It turns out that Bong is a pretty good fighter 
and gets mad when Mr. Kim talks down to Ju. Somehow, Ju escapes all the fighting and jumps into a taxi where she still has the flash drive. After a few flashbacks in the taxi, Ju takes the flash drive to Kim Jun. He can run a story on her and will know the truth. Sometime later at a quiet looking press conference, Ju starts to resign. Just then, the room fills with the reporters who ask her why she's exposed everyone. It turns out that Huang gave her the wrong flash drive. This one had lots of videos of politicians and people in power behaving badly. There's some creepy behavior, drinking and rude acts. And Mr. Kim is seen gambling and talking badly about people. After all the videos and scandals, we find out that candidate Shin beat Ju in the elections. Also, Mr. Kim was found to be in charge of the Ak Hui Foundation, and Ju has to go to jail because of her lies and problems before. The movie comes to an end sometime later as Ju is released from prison. The movie is coming to an end as Ju sternly tells Bang and Eun to get their acts together as she leaves them both looking shocked at the table. Ju is going to have a debate on TV where Kim Jun is now very successful. Ju is doing very well for herself and is now running for the mayor's position in Seoul, calling herself the People's Grenade. The movie ends with Bang and Eun praying for money and for Ju to be like she was before. We hear lightning strike in the distance and no, this is leaving the movie open for a sequel. Like and subscribe to watch more videos like this. And don't forget to turn on your notifications. That really helps my channel. Thanks for watching.